it is I, Grace, and today we will be doing a painting tutorial, like painting your line art. Anyway, so what I did is I just made some new layers and I set them on multiply and I started laying down my colors. If you set your layers on multiply, you can put them above your line art. Um, just to point out, when your layers are on multiply, you are going to need to have um, either a white layer underneath or um, like white underneath your line art to make your color show true if you have a transparent background. That was a lot of words for what should have been a simple explanation. Anyways, so now I am, now that I've done my base color, I can get a little fancier and I'm putting in some root colors because I'm all about that uh, grown out root look. <laughs> and also I like it when it, you have unnatural hair colors because it can be kind of hard to make them look natural or paint them uh, convincingly and so it's easier if you have roots. And now I'm going to go in and add some red and I just made my color value a little bit redder in my color box. I have a color box, but if you have a color wheel, just nudge it a little over to the red side and then nudge it a little darker over to the red side and add a second circle. And then once you have done that, you use your eyedropper tool and I have a little button on my um, pen and tablet thing that makes it really easy for me to switch to the eyedropper, but you may have to find your tool if you don't have a tablet. And I use that little button to get the eyedropper tool and I pick up the medium shade, so like the shade in between my darker color and my lighter color. And once I've picked up that shade, I use it to blend the two together. And if I want to blend the um, like lighter shade of red and the skin color together, I just pick up the skin color because honestly it's easier that way and I want to contain where the flush is spreading. But you could also do the medium shade in between the light color and the skin color. It would just end up looking a little strange, I think, because your red would be extending farther down. And I am using my watercolor brush, so it also does do a lot of the work for me in blending. Um, if you don't have a watercolor brush in, you're not using either Paint Tool Sai or Fire Alpaca, then I would recommend just continuing to do the eyedropper routine or whatever with your brush set on maybe like 30% opacity until oh, I'm gonna, mm, yeah 30% until you can get that smooth gradient. Um, so now I'm just adding in some shadows. I added some in below the nose and under the lip because that's where you have shadows when you're a human. And I added some to the eyebrows, under the neck, and around the face because your face and your head in general are 3D objects like I don't know how to explain it. They're 3D. They have shadows. So you should put shadows so not everything is flat because it will look strange if everything is flat. I can guarantee you that. Um, you have shadows under your hair. You have shadows around your eyes and normally you have cheekbones too, but I'm just, I didn't add cheekbones because I just, I wasn't feeling it. I was feeling minimal shadows, shadows, oh, shadows for this piece. Um, so I added in like my little collarbones and like hollow before the collarbones around the neck and general neck shadows that I just like to add because I'm all about that neck shadow life. And to pick my um, shadow color, I picked like, I, I don't like warm shadows. Shadows tend to be cooler toned. So I picked like a, a sort of desaturated brown, if that makes any sense, like a really soft brown. If you pick like an orangey brown like I did here under the neck, it kind of looks a little strange in my opinion, but you know, you do you. That's, that's what you feel. You want that orangey brown. Go for it. Live your life. Don't let me tell you how to live your life. Um, so yeah, blending out that next shadow and reversing the regrettable decision to make it orange brown. And yeah, um, <laughs> the problem with the voiceovers for me is that I kind of do them just like while watching my own videos. So I never really know what's going to come next. So it's always a little bit of adventure. Okay, and here I am blending the neck shadows by just using the skin color. Again, Fire Alpaca makes this pretty easy with the watercolor brush, but if you don't have a watercolor brush, just use that eyedropper tool. The eyedropper tool is your best friend. Grow to love the eyedropper tool, basically. That's, that's, this entire video could be summed up with use the eyedropper tool. Not the smudge brush, please, for the love of God, do not use the smudge brush. Um, anyways, now I'm adding white and I add yellow on the top, like a light yellow and a light blue on the bottom. And I take my medium shade and I use that to mix them together because I think it makes my eyes look a little more dimensional and realistic. You can't paint over black on um, line art, especially when you can, no. Okay, so that's wrong. 
You can't paint over black when your layer is set to multiply. So you have to make a new layer and paint over it and because that layer mode will be unnormal and then you merge it onto your multiply layer. Yeah, long explanation for a short, easy thing. Um, and now I'm just adding my lip color. I like the whole ombre lip look or whatever it's called. So, you know, it's kind of like lighter in the middle. No, sorry, what am I even saying? I'm so tired. I'm not qualified to teach anyone anything. Um, you add your like darkest color in the middle and you fade the color out so it looks like you've been sucking on a popsicle. I just, I like the way that that looks in makeup so I decided to replicate it in my drawings because I can, because I'm the artist and I'm the one in control now as um, Finn said to his stormtrooper boss. Um, and now I'm just adding a little bit of orange because I think that anyone that's ever like bleached their hair at home knows that when your roots grow out, especially if you have unnatural hair color that's semi-permanent, like you kind of get a yellow band around your roots and I'm all about that realism. No, no perfect hair in my drawings, nope. I'm all about committed to showing you guys the unfortunate side of at-home hair dye and blue hair. Um, so now I'm going to go in and shade the hair. And I tend to think of hair as chunks. This is how you should think of hair too. Just think of it as chunks. I think people try to draw like every individual hair, but if you're just beginning, or even if you're not just beginning, it's just hard. And your hair ends up looking like string and it's a bad look. So I use a pretty medium sized brush to shade in my hair chunks. And I also use a slightly darker, like more blue shade. I could have used a green shade or just the darker version of the hair color, but I like to change the um, shade of the shadows a little bit because it makes your piece look more dimensional and lovely. So I'm just going in with a slightly darker shade of the blue and chunkifying that hair right up. You know it. Um, and if you want, you can stop here. Like this is a perfectly fine place to stop. If you're not looking for a long, painterly look like this is fine honestly i would stop here if i wasn't doing a tutorial on how to paint over your line art because that is the second part of this tutorial painting over your line art and to do that the first step is to merge your line art together so you need to merge your multiply layers down onto your line art layer and once you get it on all in one layer you can start painting over things so I started with painting over the eyes and since again I have my watercolor brush I can just select like the darkest color of the eye shadow or whatever and just go crazy and like use it kind of mixes with the black to make um, like the dark shadow shade if that makes any sense it, it, it works I promise um, and I just keep on blending blending eyedropper tool blending until it's kind of like a smooth gradient and not so much a shocking harsh blocky mess like so I forgot my shadow under the eyes so I made a new layer set it on multiply added the shadow and then blended it out with a brush set on white but if you didn't forget your shadow you don't have to worry about this and then I merged it down into my merged line art and color layer so basically my painting layer um, and then I took oh and I added a shadow on top of the eyes too so like because you're eyelashes like cast a shadow on your eyes and just it makes your eyes it makes your eyes look nice and dimensional and you know so then I took I think the color that I used for the hair the part and I did my eyebrows with that but I kind of thought after a bit that it was a little too ashy and like mousy looking um so I made it a little warmer and when I do my eyebrows I make my brush like medium thin and I just do short little strokes and it generally turns out looking pretty eyebrowy if you end up making your eyebrows too thin or whatever, you can turn your brush, like use the eyedropper tool to go back to your skin color and make short little strokes to reshape your eyebrows. Um, my eyebrows were lacking a little bit of shape, so I ended up adding that back in. Um, but again, these are all mistakes that I hope you guys can avoid making, and unlike me. It's, it's too late for me, but it's not too late for you. Um, so I used like the darkest eyebrow shade to start going over my eyes and since it will be mixing with the black, I can just eyedropper tool that sucker and go over my lines. That's all I'm really doing here is just going over my lines. Like it's, I don't know, it's not like super rocket science complicated or anything. This isn't like some secret artist trick. This, you literally just go over your lines. It's like pretty boring, but um, you know, all for art. The things you do for art. Um, 
So I'm going over the bottom two, kind of like using my eyedropper to smudge it all together into one sort of smoldering line, uh, if I might say so myself, and adding the eyelashes. I like really long, spidery bottom lashes, but if that's not your thing, just ignore that part. I mean, hopefully you would be doing this in your style anyways. I hope you guys have styles. Having styles cool. It takes a lot of work. Maybe I'll do a video on that. Um, so anyways, I put in my little highlights and eye color and whatnot, and that was basically it. That I finished that eye, and I went on to do the other one. And I always find that one eye is easier than the other, and the second eye is normally the faster one, and it doesn't take that long, and it's super quick, and I basically wonder why the first eye took so long. Um, yeah, I start to question my life. No, I'm just kidding. I don't question my life. So I repeat, repeat the exact same procedure on the other eye and add those long spidery kind of scary eyelashes that I love so dearly and yeah that's pretty much it. I added the little eye highlights and then I decided it's time to move on to the nose and again I just took the like skin shade and started going over my lines and just by virtue of going over the lines it darkens the skin shade enough that it makes kind of like a brown which you could use to go over your lines more basically and make nostrils I realized a little late that this girl did need nostrils so I had to add them in emergency but you don't really have to add in nostrils you just only if you want to um, and I use the skin shade to go over the top line and the dark orange shade to go over the bottom line which turned into this kind of browny red orange color uh, which works really well for me I just ended up going over those lips and adding a little bit more defined like filtrum around the nose and I went over the bottom line with a light brown and I just continued going over all the rest of the lines of the face like the um, shoulders and the sides of the face and whatnot. Um, so yeah that's basically what you do you just keep on going over your lines it kind of takes forever you might start to get bored but you just have to keep on doing it. Um, this is really not reassuring and then I started going over the hair and I took like a dark teal color, like the color that I used for the darker parts of the hair and by putting over the black it mixed into like a sort of dark blue color and then I used my eyedropper tool to pick that up and that's what I used for the rest of the hair and I just added, I just shaded it like where I thought it needed to be shaded and I went over all of my line art. You need to go all over all of your line art. Leave not one line left. Like seriously, don't leave any lines left. Like, no lines visible because it'll look really weird since we're replacing the darkest value which was black with dark blue and yeah you just kind of go over your hair remember that it should be a chunk finish up that ear that you forgot to do oh wait is that just me I always forget to do the ears I don't know why I don't you know who needs to hear nobody obviously um and I add a little bit of white lines on the lips because it makes them look kind of glossy and like glossy and like I think that's the only reason I do is because it makes it look glossy and I added a little white dot on the nose and a little smudging I, I don't want to say smudging I do not use a smudge tool please do not use a smudge tool it makes everything look really muddy I blended out the harsher colors in the crease a little bit more this sounds like a makeup tutorial and yeah that that's kind of like it plot twist I decided that the face was really flat looking um, so I add, made a new layer, I set it on add, and I added pure white onto all of the high points of the face and the hair. So like the forehead, nose, well I didn't add it on the nose, but you can add it on the nose. Forehead, cheekbones, chin, all the places that protrude in your face that would be catching the light. And I set the add layer on like 30% opacity, I just set it on really low opacity. I picked up some black paint and I used that to blend it out. Don't ask me why this works. You can ask me why this works in the comments below, but like I can't explain it in this video. There's just not enough time. And yeah, that's about it. That is how you paint a person. I hope you enjoyed this video and it was somewhat educational. I'm sorry for my rambly talking. I really hope you learned something. I really do. 